So a fairly strong quarter in the first quarter here, beat on sales and beat on margins. Put a bit more detail on what this sort of quarter looked like in the context uh, for VW. Yeah, good morning, Oliver, and thank you for having me here. Yeah, we had an, indeed a very encouraging start into the year 2023 uh, with both revenues and our underlying operative margin significantly up. Yeah, our revenues was up more than 20%. Our underlying margin, which is the margin before the effects from our commodity hedges stand at 9.3%. Uh, this is well above our margin corridor. Uh, we sold 140,000 BVs. Um, we have an order bank still of 1.8 million cars in Europe alone. So customer demand is still strong. Um, and, and you remember when we released our targets for 2023, uh, quite some people thought uh, we were quite ambitious, uh, but based on this promising start in the first quarter, and based on a order bank of 1.8 million cars in Europe, we are quite confident that we can fully achieve our, our financial outlook. And now we're talking about the outlook. I'd like it, if you could, for, to rank for me the US, Europe, and China, and kind of what you think will be the biggest drivers of growth and what in each of those markets will drive that growth. I know Europe, for example, you have a lot of backlogs. Just want to get your perspective on that. Yeah. Look, we saw very strong growth both in Europe um, and, and in the US. Um, in, in, in China, we had a, a, a slower start, both in terms of industry and in terms of our own sales. Uh, but we expect specifically in Europe and in China, uh, and in Europe and in the US, uh, demand uh, will be strong, um, our deliveries will be strong, and this will be a significant push also for the second half of the year. In Europe, I, I said it already, we have an order backlog of 1.8 million cars this will carry us well into the year um, 2023. But in terms of orders in Europe, I, I know there's a lot of backlog. I know we, we spoke to Mercedes last week. They were saying that, yes, we have this huge backlog, but actually the orders have slowed down substantially. What are you seeing for orders in Europe? Um, it's, it's actually qu quite different at, at, at Volkswagen. Um, look, we had quite some deliveries. Um, the deliveries were up 7.5%. The, the deliveries were up more than 20% in Europe, and still we sit on an order bank of 1.8 million cars. So the order intake was rather strong, specifically on the ICE cars. It was a little bit weaker on the BV side, but this has also something to do with like a, 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 a effect that we saw at the end of last year when state subsidies were running out. So there were a lot of pre-orders last year, um, but also on the BV side, we expect orders to pick up um, on the remainder of the year. Um, um, specifically with also new cars hitting the showrooms. I'm standing here in, in front of an ID7. It's a great car. It will hit the showroom in the second half of the year. Um, it's a lot of technology, a range of 700 kilometers. Um, so we're quite confident that we can achieve our, our, our targets also on the delivery side. And then in terms of pricing, it really held up, it seems, in the first quarter. Have we reached peak pricing, do you think, for cars? Do you think that that is going to come down? Um, Oliver, we think we have a rather strong position in the current pricing environment. First and foremost, we have strong and fascinating brands. We have Porsche, we have Audi, Lamborghini, Bentley, even, even Volkswagen. Um, and as said before, we, we sit on a huge order bank, specifically on the ICE cars, but also on, 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 on the PVs cars in, in Europe. Um, fascinating cars are hitting the showroom in the second half of the years. And last but not least, uh, we have a clear strategy that, that our first focus is margin and margin quality rather than volume and market share. So based on that, uh, we, we are, I'm not worried about our pricing discipline. And so obviously with the Tesla aggressively cutting prices, so you're not, that's not something that you would see yourselves doing in order to, you don't need to wage a, a price war with Tesla if I'm hearing you correctly. Oliver, as just mentioned, first and foremost, we have a very strong position, both in terms of orders and in terms of product substance. And second, we have our strategy. And, and we don't want to lose our, our target out of sight, margin parity, um, um, in the next two to three years at ICE and um, BVs. And for that, we need also strong pricing on the BV side. And then so margins, as you say, you know, they have two sides, the pricing, but also the cost. Do you think that a way to maintain the margins would be to look at cost? Is that something you, you, you're looking at? No, th thank, thank you for your comment. That, that's, that's exactly what we are doing. 
um, I always said that the competition will increase. Look, with semiconductors, supply improving, with demand is slightly coming down, a Q3, Q, Q4 will see a much intensified competition. Um, and, and we're preparing for that accordingly. On the one side, we have this strong product substance, but on the other hand, we are not naive. We have to prepare on the cost side, uh, both in terms of productivity, in terms of fixed cost discipline. Um, we need a program at Brand Volkswagen to improve margin. So these are the things we, 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 we set up right now. And then something that this quarter was also marked by, um, obviously, the launch of the model uh, behind you, but also your entire board went to China. What did you leave that visit with? No, you're right. Uh, we have been in China. I personally also sp spent three days in China. We had a look at competition. Uh, we talked to the teams on the ground. We talked to customers. Um, uh, we talked to our JV partners. Um, and, and it's clear we have a very strong position in China. Uh, but although we have that strong position, we have to accelerate. We have to accelerate specifically on, on the BV side. Um, and I would say in, in three dimensions. First, in, in, in ADAS, so in driving assistance function, um, in in-car infotainment, but also in general in the overall speed at which we adapt to local, um, uh, local uh, Chinese customer needs. And in all these three areas, we made significant decisions already. We, we teamed up with Horizon Robotics on, on the other side. We, 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 we created some uh, JVs and, and, and some uh, collaborations on the Inca infotainment. And, and most importantly, we, we founded the 100% Techco with, um, yeah, in the midterm, 2,000 uh, developers on the ground in China who develop in China for China to, to, to speed up the development. Um, and, and last but not least, we, we introduced the, the ID7. It's a great car. So with all these measures we, we have in place already, uh, we are quite confident that we can play a leading role in China in the future. And, do you guys, and are you targeting a certain proportion of the market in China that you think you can, you can achieve? Obviously, in the first quarter, you know, one of the stories was that BYD overtook Volkswagen. Mm. Um, how do you win back that crown? Is it down to that recipe that you have just, uh, you have just given? Um, or is there anything else you can do? And, and sort of what are you aiming at? What do you think is a, is a, good, is a good proportion of that market? No. No, we, we are still a market leader in ice cars, that's obvious. Uh, we had a slow start in BAVs in, in 2023, but we want to pick up um, in, in the remainder of the year. But for China, it's true what, what we always say for, for the rest of the world. We focus on the quality and, and margin of the business rather than an, on, on volume and market share. And then everyone seems to have had a fairly good quarter in the first quarter, but everyone's a bit hesitant about the sort of outlook. For you, in your mind, is that to do with the sort of more macro conditions of, you know, a global slowdown, the Fed and all that's going on with interest mm -hmm. rates? Or to what degree is it that and to what degree do you think it is specifics within the auto sector? I'd like if you could draw that distinction between the sort of the macro and what you're looking at in the auto sector. Yeah. No, of course, we, we look into a challenging environment. We have a discussion around banks. And, and, and we have inflation um, that, that, that obviously is, is gives some, some uncertainty. Uh, for the auto sector, we still believe the, the sector will, the overall industry will, will in, increase by 7 to 8 percent. This is our current assumption. But yes, there will be increased competition um, in the second half of the year. But as said, based on a pro good product substance, strong product substance, based on our strong brands, and we're preparing on the cost side, we are quite confident that we can achieve our outlook, uh, financial outlook, specifically also in terms of, of, of our margin target between seven and a half and eight and a half percent. 